Hello guys, this is going to be your tutorial for creating your digital mosaic. Um, this tutorial is for those of you who have decided to use Photopea to complete your project. Um, so we are going to be learning how to create our mosaic pieces um, and we're also going to be learning how to incorporate the photograph or pictures that you are using as a reference to create your mosaic design. So for my example, I'll go ahead and show you what the finished uh, product looks like. I decided to do a mosaic of Amanda Gorman, who was the poet from the 2021 uh, inauguration for President Biden. Um, and I included a background with a mountain and the title of her poem that she recited, The Hill We Climb. Um, you guys don't have to include stuff like the background or font or anything like that. That's just something that I decided to do um, as a personal touch to this piece of art that I created. And I'm going to show you how I started this mosaic. So the first thing that I did was I looked for a picture that I wanted to use. I knew I wanted to find a picture of Amanda Gorman. Um, I wanted to use a photograph of her from the inauguration uh, because her look from the inauguration was super iconic. And I knew that she would be automatically recognized by the clothing that she's wearing. Um, so I found a picture. There was a lot to choose from when I did a Google search. Um, so I just chose one that I thought would work really well for me. Um, and what I did once I found one on my Google search is I simply right clicked and I went to copy image. Um, this may work for you. Uh, something else you can try doing is you can instead right click and you can save image as and that will allow you to save this image as a file to your computer. So I'm going to go ahead and show you both ways. So I'm just saving this to my graphic art folder and that's going to download as a JPEG file. So now that I have um, found my picture, I'll show you how to do the copy image method first. So again, I'm right clicking and I'm hitting copy image. I'm going back to Photopea and I'm going to create a new document. So I'm going to click on new project. And the nice thing about copying images from Google is that if you do it before you open Photopea, the size of the photograph you just copied will kind of be remembered by your device. So when you open this uh, file to start setting up your document, the settings of the uh, width and the height should actually be the correct sizes for the, photo for the photograph that you just copied. So you shouldn't have to adjust anything right here. So I'm just gonna type in my name and mosaic because that is what I'm working on today and I'm gonna hit create. And this is going to create a uh, document that should be the same size as my photograph that I copied. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to click paste and that's gonna paste my photograph. And as you can see, it fits perfectly on my canvas because the program remembered the dimensions of the photograph I copied. So that is one way to incorporate your photograph into your Photopea document. I'll go ahead and show you a second way. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File and hit New. And this time I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use, um, instead of using the default sizes, I'm just going to go down and I'm going to choose um, a photo size. I'm going to choose five by seven. I think that's a good size. I don't like using a much larger size than this because again, the larger your file is, the slower your computer may run while you're working on it. So I'll go ahead and click five by seven and I will hit create and that will give me a blank document. So now this is the second way that you can add a photograph. So you remember that I uh, right clicked on the second time and I hit save image as and I downloaded that photograph to my computer. Now what I can do, now that I've created my blank document, I'm going to go up to where it says file and I'm going to choose open and place. It's important to choose open and place when you are placing a photograph on your document because if you simply click open to open the photograph you saved it will open it in a new file so we're going to go to open and place 
and we're going to find where I saved that photograph and I saved it in my graphic art folder. So I'm just gonna look for that and I found it right here. It's named Amanda Gorman, so that makes it really easy. And I'm gonna click open. If you're using your Chromebook, it's just gonna be saved to your Google Drive. So it should be in the most recent folder if you just saved it. So I'm gonna hit open and that's going to place that photograph on my canvas. And now I can use my crop tool. I'm just gonna look for it right here. The crop tool kind of looks like this little square with these little you know, edges hanging off of it. I'm gonna click on that and I can click and drag and draw a little border. And I'm gonna have it line up right with my photograph. I'll do my best to kind of make it line up. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and that's gonna crop it. And I can just kind of try that one more time if I have a little bit of my edge left over. All right, so now I have my photograph. So now I'm gonna show you the main tool that you're going to be using to create your mosaic shapes. So if you look on the toolbar, you're gonna to go all the way down until you find the pen tool. If you hover over it, it's just called pen tool, it has a little P, which means that the letter P on your keyboard is your hotkey. So if I hit the letter P, it changes my uh, tool to the pen tool. And this is how the pen tool works. When you click once with the pen tool, it creates a blue dot on your canvas. And if you notice, it creates a new layer on your layer window. You can see I have my background. I have my picture of Amanda Gorman, which I have turned off because I want to have just a blank background for right now. And now I have a new layer that's called shape one because I'm creating a shape. So to create the rest of my shape, I'm simply going to click again and you're gonna see a line appears, a blue line connecting those two dots. And I can continue to click to create a dotted line to create a shape. This is pretty similar with how you are using the tools in Google Drawings. So this is why it's really up to you which platform you want to use. You get similar effects from using the tools in each of the platforms, Google Drawings and Photopea. It's just you guys getting to choose which uh, program you want to invest your time in and which program is gonna work best for you and choosing your own style of working. So you can see I was able to create a custom shape simply by clicking around and created a dotted, creating a dotted line and going all the way around and clicking on the very first point. So I'll do that again. So click, 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 click. Just making straight lines that creates a shape. So if you notice that this shape looks like it's, you know, complete, but unless you see a blue line going all the way around the shape, it's not complete. What you need to do to complete your shape is click all the way back on that very first point that you created. So I wanna make sure my mouse is right on that little blue square and I'm gonna click to make that last line connect so I can see that blue line. What I also notice is over here on my history, there's a little you know, mark for every point that I made. So it says add anchor point, add anchor point, and that's each of those little dots that you see down here. What I want to see when my shape is finished and I've closed it is I want to see close path because that tells me that that shape is finished. Here's what happens if you don't finish your, sh your shape. So say I go ahead and I click, 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 click. Well, that looks pretty finished. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make my next shape. I'm gonna go down over here and make my next shape. Well, see, that's what happens because that line is still connected to that last piece that I made. If I try to do it over here, see, it's gonna keep extending. Um, so I'm not able to make a new shape with the pen tool until I close this first shape that I was making. So I have to go back and click on that very first square to close the shape and get that close path message on my history. So now you know how to make shapes using the pen tool. And this is how you're going to create your mosaic is you're going to start looking at your photograph and deciding visually with your eyes how to start breaking your photograph up into pieces. You're kind of thinking of it like a puzzle piece or a puzzle. Um, we've all played with puzzles before where you have a photograph that's been 
cut up into a whole bunch of different pieces. We're thinking about this uh, photograph right here in the same way. So we're gonna be looking with our eyes to see how we can start cutting this photograph up into our separate mosaic pieces. So um, we're, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I started. And I'm gonna be doing her headband here because I think that's a nice, simple shape to kind of look at. And it's really easy to look at that and kind of visualize how to break it down into pieces. So I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to go ahead and trace my first shape. And for me, I really enjoyed using different shades of color. So I can see that there's lots of different shades here in this red headband. It was made out of satin. So it has a nice shiny kind of reflective surface. There is dark kind of shadowy reds. There's some lighter, almost, you know, very light reds or pinks up where the reflection is. And there's a couple of other shades kind of like in different areas showing that where the shadows or the highlights are. If you want to choose all one, you know, color for your mosaic, that's totally fine. Um, but if you want to try and be ambitious and break it down into multiple shaded pieces, please feel free to do that. So I'm just taking a look at this headband and I can see this shape right here this kind of like lighter shade of red. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace just that shape. So I'm gonna go around with my piece and I'm going to just create a generic shape. So what you might notice is that this is automatically filling with this red color and now it's kind of hard to see the rest of that shape that I'm trying to trace. So to fix that, I can actually go up to where it says fill and you can see that red color is right there on these settings up in the window when I choose the pen tool. And I can click and I can just turn that off by clicking on this little X button right here. So now there's no color, it's just this blue line. So I'm gonna finish tracing, coming back up and around. So you're just going to continue up around uh, the shape that you're tracing. So I'm just going to continue up over here and it ends in a point. And again, the more points that you make, the more curved you can make your shape to follow along with the shape that you're trying to trace. And then I'm finally going to click on that first point to complete my shape. And now I can fill it in with color. So I'm going to go back to my fill and I'm going to click on the uh, color which is this first little red square, and that's gonna give me some color options. And to get my color picker, if I want to choose a specific color, I'm gonna click right here on my color picker. And something that you might notice is if you just click and drag your color picker over to the side, is that if you come over here, you get this little crosshair symbol with a little plus sign. And this is your little eyedropper that will copy any color that's on the canvas wherever you click. So if I click right here, it's going to change the fill to this kind of lightish red color. If I click over here, it's going to change it to more of a medium red. And if I click down here where it's dark, it's going to change it to a darker color. So I know that this shape that I just traced is a little bit lighter than the area I'm right next to. And I know that there's some similar colors right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these lighter reds and maybe it's a little bit too light. So I'm going to click over here to make it a little bit darker. That looks good. And I'm going to hit OK. And now that shape has filled with that lighter red color. If I turn my picture off, I can see what it looks like by itself. I'm going to turn it back on and I'm going to continue to trace my next shapes. So I'm going to come here down here and um, you can see that my fill is start, still turned on. So I'm going to click on that, turn it back off again. So I just have the clear lines. Um, it's going to turn that off again, but I can turn it back on in just a second. I'm going to start tracing my new shape. And I'm just going to come up along her hairline uh, under the bottom of this darker piece of her headband. Kind of click around here. And that is now filled with color. And now I can come back to my color picker. And now it's filled with that original color, but I know that it's a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to my color picker and use that little eyedropper and find a, duller, a darker color and hit OK. I can come back to my first shape and kind of see how that looks and I can go ahead and fill that one back in. My original color, that lighter red, is saved right here on my swatches. So I click on that, I can see that color. So now I see my two pieces together. 
If I come back over here and I turn my photograph off, I can see what those two pieces look like. And I wanna make sure that I'm leaving a little bit of space in between my lines because this is what's gonna make your mosaic look really uh, nice and look like an actual mosaic that we have these different pieces here. And you can see that these blue lines appear when I have the shape that I created clicked on. If I click on another shape, they'll switch over to that one. And if I click on my picture, they'll go away completely. So if you want to see what they look like without that blue line, there you go. So I'm going to keep at it, keep tracing shapes to start filling in my mosaic. And that is how I'm going to complete my mosaic portrait. So it should look like this when it's finished. I took a separate picture of a mountain and added that to the background. So I actually used two photographs to create this design. You don't have to do that. You only have to use one, but if you're looking for something that's a little bit more uh, creative and customized, that's something that you can think about. Once you are finished filling in all of your mosaic pieces, you can come back to your layers and you're probably going to have a lot of pieces. It's probably going to look something like this. Lots and lots of shapes with lots of different pieces. So you're just going to scroll down to the bottom of this list of all of these little pieces until you can find your original uh, picture file. And you're just going to click on the eyeball and turn it off by clicking on that eyeball and you can see what your finished mosaic is going to look like. So that is how to use Photopea to create your mosaic. Have fun with this and uh, to turn it in you are simply going to go to file, export as, JPEG. You're going to save that to your device and you're going to upload it to Google Classroom. Have fun with this. Please let me know if you have any questions.